Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Justin Teague. I am the worship and communications pastor here at Faithbridge. I'm with Timothy Atik, who just finished preaching uh, part two of his two-part series here at Faithbridge. Thanks for joining us for Postscript, Timothy. So good to be back. Uh, pardon the kids uh, in the background, if you can hear them. Uh, the, uh, the kids' ministry is using Cinecord East while we're doing some construction in there. So yeah. we'll just go ahead and go yeah, great. Uh, with them. It'll be great. Cool. Uh, today you preached on um, the second of the seven I am statements yep. uh, you, last week, uh, uh, you, you, you did I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. to this week was I am the resurrection and yeah. the life. Um, you had said uh, towards the end of your sermon that uh, God uses the church body to function uh, as helping to do that unwrapping. A group of people who journey life together, helping one another live an unwrapped life. Yeah. What are ways we can do this? As the body of Christ. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think there's a there's this lie that we buy into that our relationship with God is is private. It's a private matter, and that's not true. Your relationship with God is personal, but not private. And there's a big distinction there. You know, I think we buy into this mentality that you know we want to keep all of our our struggles to ourselves, but the the scriptures call us to live in the light and it calls us to to walk through life together. Proverbs speaks to it. It says iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Um, and so the best thing you can do is first ask the question, who really knows you in life? You know, a, it's it's good to think about, are you fully known and fully loved? Like who in this world can celebrate your strengths and victories and then who is so well acquainted with your weaknesses they can challenge you on them and press in on you and call you out on those things you know so i think i love it that faith bridge has small group environments grow groups if you're not in a grow group you need to be in a grow group because that is a setting that the church is providing for you to, to kind of bring the church to a smaller place where you can step into a, to an environment with friends who you can get to know. But, but beyond that, and it might be with people in that grow group, you need one to two people. Every single person needs one to two people who know everything about you. You know, I just sent a list of questions. I, I live in Waco now. And so, you know, I needed to find a new guy to kind of hold me accountable to things. And so I sent them a list of questions and they are invasive questions. You know, uh, what's my time with the Lord look like this week? Am I loving and leading my wife? How did I respond in conflict? Was I gentle and kind to my wife? Am I investing in my kids? Am I taking care of my body by eating right and working out? We can look at the, you know, have I, um, have I looked lustfully at anyone? These are questions that we would never want anyone to ask us. It, it scares us to death, but that there's something so freeing about being fully known and fully loved. And there's something so freeing about having one to two people in our lives with whom it's okay to not be okay, but they won't let us stay where we're at, you know? And so the hardest part about all of it is that it takes one person to be courageous, to take the initiative and state the obvious, to say, I don't do well when I live in isolation. I need, would you be willing to step into my life and ask me the tough questions? Because I guarantee if you do that, that person is gonna say, I've got some questions that I really need you to ask me as well, you know? And so that's what it takes. It takes, t you have to take initiative. You have to be willing to be vulnerable, but that's where you're gonna see growth because you, you can only go so far by yourself. Jesus often uses his people to do the unwrapping. Yeah, that's great, Timothy. Yeah. That's a good challenge for us all. Yeah, cool. 
Uh, you, this is, you did two of the IEMs here at yeah. Faithbridge. Uh, you did all seven of them at Vertical. I'm yeah. just curious, uh, in doing that and exploring yeah. more about Jesus, was there a, a big takeaway from you in that whole experience? Yeah, I think I just, you know, when, um, when I did the series at Vertical, I, the title of it was Live Forever because it really, it's what I talked about today. If you go and study the I Am's, it always comes back to eternal life is something that begins today, that we can begin to taste what life in heaven will be like today. You know, you think about heaven where we will see God, live life with God, there will be joy, there will be fullness. You know, when Jesus says the, He's the bread of life, He's basically saying, I'm a slice of the whole loaf. Like I've come down to be a little appetizer for you that you can begin to experience life in heaven now. You know, um, when he says, I'm the true vine, he's saying, I'm not, I'm not just the one true source of life, eternal life. I'm the one true source of all life, for relational life, emotional life. You know, I'm the light of the world. He's saying, man, when you stop walking in darkness, and start living in the light today. There is life in the light today, and then one day you're gonna die and go to a place where there is no darkness and there's not even the sun, not Jesus Christ the sun, but S-U-N sun. It doesn't even need to exist because Jesus Christ will illuminate the whole place. You know, that that's what the the I am's come back to is that it goes so, so much further than eternal life that you know, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. He really means it, you know, but it's going to have everything to do with him. That that life is so much attached to him that he is that life. I love it that he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He's saying, I am life. He doesn't say, I'm the way to life. He says, I mean, like, you will have to have everything to do with me to experience it. So That's awesome. Uh, is there a resource we, like... Could we go listen to those? If, uh, if yeah, to? sure. Um, you can go on to Vertical's podcast. Just go to iTunes. It's on there. And hope it's beneficial and, and encouraging. Cool. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of us will do that. Yeah. Thank you, TA. You bet. Hey, thank you for joining us for another Postscript. We will see you back next Sunday with Duffy Robbins. Take care. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.